Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Time and Tide, celebrating watchers, wearers, and their journeys since 2014. It's Basel World, baby. Basel, Basel. Basel, 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 Basel. What is Basel World? This literally, physically, is Basel World, but what's inside? Let's go and have a look. Look, one of the best things about the first episode of the Home Delivery Watch Fair was the engagement. I asked for it, I got it, I'm asking you again. This time, if you could please list your five favorite watches released at Pretend Basel, Virtual Basel, in the comments. Vote or not vote on the Corona Beard situation. Should it go, should it stay, up to you. But please list your five favorite watches of the next hour. And we will, last time we, we offered a collector's pack, one of each of Time and Tide's magazine. I'm going to remind you of these two beautiful things. Today, in Basel, everything's bigger in Basel, and the prize is bigger too. We are offering a Time and Tide travel pack. Now this includes our famous burnt orange travel pouch, which always sells out each time we replenish it, and a Time and Tide strap changing tool, as well as two random straps to take with you on your adventures. There's gonna be a Bond in there because I love Bond NATOs, as well as a sailcloth strap. So we have a Watch Lovers Dream Travel Pack to give away. We're gonna give two away to people that list their top five. Don't be shy. I know you won't be. Blank pan. Well, it's May in 2020 and we don't have a lot to report here. We have two models that have evolved in their dial color and case material. It is the Blank Pan Villaray Quantime Complete and the Ultra Plate, both now with blue dials. Now what we see here is a triple calendar, typical Villaray blank pan style, really, really elegant. And again, with a nice new dynamic between this, this rich navy blue and a really more subtle shade of, of red gold. In addition to the triple calendar complication on the Villaray Quantime Complete, we also have a scale tracking the lunar months in a semicircle configuration over the moon phase aperture. Rado, well, two models that both have undersea motifs in different ways. Firstly, the golden horse. And if you look closely, that's not a golden racehorse, that's a golden seahorse that we can see kissing there around about six. This is the brand new Rado Golden Horse 1957 limited edition. How limited? Not that limited, 1957 pieces, but they'll be hotly sought. This is a really on trend color of green. It's a rich sort of lush green dial. We have a perfectly tuned 37 millimeter case at 10.8 millimeters thick or thin, should I say. Genuinely vintage size in its proportions, which, which marries up really nicely with this mid-century beads of rice bracelet and also a smooth bezel in this case. So this is a very much a contender for your daily watch. However, it has some mod cons. It has 80 hours of power reserve, so it will last all through from Friday to Monday if you chose to take it off for the weekend, but why would you? The Rado Captain Cook has changed the game for Rado. It is their most popular model in a very long time. I was gonna say forever, not quite that long. It's really popular and now we have a bronze trio of pieces, the 42 millimeter size. Now, interestingly about this bronze, it is not going to patina. It is an aluminum and copper alloy that resists oxidization and changing in appearance. So it will stay that golden color. So the tin has been extracted from that alloy and aluminum in its place to make that new compound. There are three color variations. We have a blue, a green, and a rich brown in a sunburst style. And we have bronze indices as well. It's quite a golden hue to the whole package. Okay, you love the watch, but you're allergic to bronze. Not necessarily a problem. These three models have solved the issue with a titanium case back. But for $2,600, how deep will this go? It has water resistance of 300 meters. Hamilton, we'd better call Saul. 
Is it that watch from Better Call Saul? It's not, it looks a lot like it. It was actually the watch worn by Roger Moore in Live and Let Die. So in a Bond year, we have Hamilton reminding us of the rich back catalog of watch choices that 007 has made over the years. Now this is a digital watch, but where's the display? The cool thing here is that you have to actually activate the time to see it from a button on the side. There are two colorway choices in PVD gold or steel. Pricing of the model is 995 in PVD gold or 745 in steel. Swatch. Now Swatch released two braces of 007 Bond models this year in different sizes. At 34 mil, we have Casino Royale, Dr. No and License to Kill. And in 41 mil, we have The World Is Not Enough, Moonraker and Honor Her Majesty's Secret Service. Now there was a bit of a buzz when they were released because they were snapped up very quickly. We had people faxing and phoning in from all over the world saying they'd found Swatch models in airport shops and all over the place. But the fact is they came, they went, and still we wait for Bond. It is happening. It can happen? Okay, show me. No, no, I, I mean, as in, it can. And it has. No way! <laughs> H, Moser, and C, wow. So many firsts with the Streamliner. The Streamliner Flyback Chronograph Automatic. We have the first automatic chronograph from Moser, developed with Agenor, and a flyback chronograph that can be activated underwater for all those times you want to time something while you're underneath the water. Secondly, we have the first integrated steel bracelet on a Moser. And packaged up, we have steel sports watch viability with 120 meters water resistance, but don't get your hopes up. This little 42 millimeter by 14 millimeter high watch is sold out. Only 100 pieces were made and it is gone. The price in US dollars for this watch, if you are lucky enough to ever have the chance to buy one, new that is, is 39,900 US dollars. What is blacker than the devil's soul? Easy. Vanta Black, a substance that absorbs 99.965% of light. <laughs> and this, I'm laughing, but this watch started as a joke. I started a joke. Well, Moses started a joke that started the whole world wanting this watch. So in 2019, it was a joke. In 2020, it's a production piece. Well, not exactly production, it's limited, but we have three variations of a watch with a Vanta Black dial and Vanta Black hands, which means, what time is it? It doesn't even matter. You, you don't wear Moser watches to have the time. Some of their watches don't even have hands on the dial at all. So the Moser Vanta Black is in a 39 millimeter and 43 millimeter hand wound model in white gold. We also have a Turbion in 42 millimeters, also in white gold. Do you need to know any more? It's got a black dial with black hands. It doesn't make any sense. It either moves you or it doesn't. And I'd suggest you move fast if you want it because Moses sell out. And now welcome to the show, the home delivery watch fair, someone that I'm usually meeting in the media lounge, you know, crossing paths with tumbleweeds flying past you know, as, as we vie for supreme traffic supremacy. <laughs> Frank Geelan from Monochrome. Hi there, good morning. Uh, I expected you to do to some sort of a, you know, an amazing entrance or something. Couldn't you have just, you know, done some sort of like, t you know, somersault or? Struggle with some beer bottles and then <laughs> uh, throw in a schnitzel and nah, <laughs> too early for that. <laughs> <laughs> good to see you. Likewise. Yeah. By now we would have already been sick of each other, you know, where the, the banter will have already run its course. We've had two watch fairs already, but no, I, I'm actually missing you. It's weird. Weird, definitely, but also fine. <laughs> mm. I would have loved to uh, to sit together on, uh, on the Saturday night at uh, Basel to enjoy a schnitzel dinner and to have some fun together with all the indies and the online guys. So yes. unfortunately it's not happening. Well, look, I, we, let's bring it in. It can happen. It is happening. It can happen. 
Okay, show me. No, no, I, I mean, as in, it can. And it has. No way! <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Look at this bad boy. Yes. <laughs> hey, give me, give me the beer. Look at my uh, my assistant nearby. No, I I miss this dinner so much, and we need to tell people because what the schnitzel dinner really was for us at Basel. Because the, the, this episode is the virtual Basel fair. I'm trying to take the readers who are watching this on these cameras on this camera. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they've been following our, our stories for years, but they don't necessarily get a sense of what the experience is like. And for me, a lot of the Basel experience is after hours. And I want you to tell me how this brilliant idea of a little humble schnitzel dinner happened. There's another guy that we might recognize in the story who's somewhat connected to Speedy's. Um, tell me, mm -hmm. you know, who is Monochrome and how did the schnitzel dinner happen? And I'm just going to drink while you talk. Cheers. Um, who, who is monochrome? That, that's one part, it's a long story, uh, so I'll, I'll forget about that part. Uh, but the schnitzel dinner, it was 2009 when Robert-Jan Broer and I drove to Basel World for the first time. Um, it was uh, two young guys in a car, a proper road trip kind of. Can we need this picture, I want this picture up while you talk, because you guys look about 40 years younger. <laughs> oh, we're on the website. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a bunch more pictures of those, but uh, this one was uh, good for publication. Mm. Um, <laughs> Two young guys with a dream. dream. Two young guys so with a dream and no money. We just wanted to see watches, 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 and we drove to Basel. Well, you once started at that time. At least we didn't have anything like a business plan. We just had our website, and we were like. Yay, we had like 300 <laughs> uh, people read our website. This week. Yeah, you know, That's that pretty good, actually. That's pretty good. I, I, we were proud of it. And of course, we told <laughs> every brand that they had to advertise with us, mm. um, which caused some, uh, some people to laugh a bit. We were going to spend the full week there. We went to the, um, what was uh, the palace at the time. They had, they had this huge tent outside of Basel World where uh, a lot of indies uh, were. And at that time, Indies were not as hip and happening as they are at this time. So there was like Urwerk, MBNF, Dubutun, uh, and quite a few other brands. And that's actually where we enjoyed ourselves a lot. We got to talk to the people who were making the watches, who were designing the watches, who, you know, we were talking with everyone from the brand. Of course, that were, meant one or two persons per brand because the brands were very small. But it was a very good experience. And after, you know, the fair closed in the evening, we were hanging with these guys, drinking a beer, eating something. And the next year we went again to Basel World doing exactly the same. For the first time we met with, uh, with Ben Clymer and Ariel Adams. And after uh, meeting these guys, we went to eat a schnitzel and uh, drink a beer. And Tim and Bart Kronefeld were there. And uh, I think Case Engelbart, uh, Peter Speakmarin, uh, I'm probably forgetting some people, but it was, uh, you know, a small group, some indies and some online guys. And we were at that year, it was 2010. Uh, I think the only online guys for the rest was print, print, print. Um, yeah. And it was, it was kind of weird actually, but, but we had so much fun. And uh, at a certain point they said, okay, next year again. Yeah. Next year again, of course. So in 2011, we organized a few more people. Kari Vutilainen joined in. Um, I can't even recall who. Uh, I think Thomas Pressure was there. Uh, quite a lot of independent. Uh, uh, the McGonagalls were there too, by the way, mm. from Ireland. And we had so much fun. Uh, I think all of us got a little tipsy. Um, of course, we enjoyed <laughs> those but magnificent schnitzels. Uh, but we had a lot of fun. And look, I think the, the, the feedback from everyone, and, and when I joined uh, my first schnitzel dinner, I think probably 2014, 2015, around then, yeah, um, I, I very quickly understood what made this kind of mythical, which is that, you know, when you're at Basel, you, you have to behave. There's a certain, you know, you're smiling all the time. You, there's a certain courtesy that's required and there's everything's wonderful, you, everything's perfect. The watches are all amazing. And by the end of the day, you just want to have a beer and, and basically let your face 
relax. And, and like, this and is the, the first point. <laughs> be normal, you know, among, uh, among of, uh, some of the, the nice people. You don't. You want to loosen that tie a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, and, and you know, have a, have a normal conversation and date. Um, to have a laugh, and I think everyone was um, ready for that kind of dinner instead of the next uh, five course, seven course, or twelve course uh, dinner with uh, the most elegant wines and the most refined. Um, uh, bon appetit, by the way. Uh, most mm. I can't not eat this thing. You know what? what once we did want. a piece. We did a piece with a, um, a full beer in front of me when I did a list, and I didn't drink the beer. And I think we had 150 comments of people saying, could you just drink the beer? So if I don't eat this, <laughs> if I don't eat this, I'm going to have people saying, why didn't you eat the schnitzel? It's a, it's a very good schnitzel. This is not a prop schnitzel. It's already plus, empty. Frank, <laughs> it's like 10 in the morning. What time did you start? Well. Not going to disclose that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay. So, look, it was a lot of fun. And I think it was uh, the beauty of what you did as well is everything at Basel is bigger and it bloats and it gets too big. But you always kept the schnitzel dinner to 45. So it was kind of like, you know well, that movie, The 300? Bigger, it's like so a 45. It, yeah, exactly. It was not an option. Of course, people were saying <laughs> do it in a bigger venue. But, uh, you know, it was, it was fun. The way it was, it was good. And... Um, it, it was like, uh, they, like Harris uh, said, there was uh, a person in every corner that you were dying to meet and to have a talk, uh, conversation with. Yeah. And that was actually what it should have been uh, right from the start, you know, after a full day of running uh, during Basel, because it is a lot of running, let's yeah. face it, and, and into your meetings and performing for half an hour, either with an interview pictures, videos, bam, 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 running yeah. through the net. And, and, this, and then you get to the media room and you have to have some banter with these Aussies and Dutchies. You know, it never stops. It was, you could never let your guard down. <laughs> now, look, um, Frank, tell me, are we going to come up with something here? Have we? St I started Googling Geneva, best schnitzel Geneva. I got absolutely nowhere. So, no, it's caviar or... I think maybe I like know. steak frites. I don't know. It's but it, we might lose uh, the magic. They have a very good uh, steak with uh, with French fries. Yes, I think entre. There's some there's some place I've been there as well. It's really weird to be eating live on this. I, I don't know if this is going to make good television. I'm going to finish that as soon either. as we've stopped talking. Um, I but my I it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. I, I told you to bring a prop schnitzel. How hard was this, Frank? Um, look, I uh, I really enjoyed that night. I hope that we find a way to continue it um, in Geneva. Let's talk Rolex because I don't know how you guys did it. Tell people about the the, the monochrome Rolex prediction thing. We started in 2013, a bit with a prediction, and 2014 when uh, Brice uh, had joined us. He, uh, he's a bit of a Photoshop wizard, uh, so he was able to uh, make mock-ups of what we uh, were discussing, actually. And uh, at that year, I think we were talking about a new uh, Sea Dweller, a new uh, Pepsi GMT, and it was lots of wishful thinking uh, that was translated into lovely uh, Photoshop mock-ups. And we did those predictions uh, that year, and we arrived for the first year that year at, uh, at Basel, and the people of Rolex were like, did you guys have an insider? <laughs> <laughs> we were like, no, really? <laughs> of course not. We have had quite a few one, uh, good ones uh, that we predicted uh, correctly. Uh, Daytona's, uh, Pepsi, uh, the Blue Milgaus, the Return of the Sea Dweller uh, 4000s, well, unfortunately, only in the collection uh, for three years, but still, it was there, and quite a few more. But uh, it was fun to do that. Well, look, I'm not here to, to stroke the ego because you know we, we must maintain healthy banter and rivalry. Um, however, I am very curious. Uh, I am very impressed, obviously, because I'm asking you to do the segment with us, and let's just see. We're not going to find out in 2020 whether your predictions were right. However, they might be held for 2021. So for all we know, what we're about to explore may well exist one day and be available on the wrist. So let's go through. Tell me, where did you land on, on which models you think are, are likely to be reprised? And again, we say this likely as in 
it's it's uh, throwing a, uh, a tail on a donkey from a long distance, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, well, one of the things, of course, you know, the, 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 the Submariner will be uh, probably uh, get a new movement. Milgauss is something that we hope will be uh, redone uh, and a bit more in a vintage style. We hope we An will come one. back with, with a black ceramic bezel and a, a little red triangle uh, on top. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, the lightning hands. And drawing back to uh, the very old uh, uh, Milgauss, the 6541, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, the old one. I hope to see something like that uh, and then get away from the, from the green glass uh, kind of uh, funky stuff which has been performing extremely well. It's, it's a popular model. Another one, Yachtmaster. Uh, we could imagine that will be revamped into a 42 mil, uh, so slightly bigger, a bit more funky colors on the basil uh, to make it a bit more uh, contemporary, a bit more uh, sporty, uh, because the Yachtmaster is a bit of a, the, the shiny brother of the Submariner that, you know, a bit of a strange one. Mm. Uh, no, I think there's a lot of, there's definitely a lot of, um, there's a lot of color and diversity and, and potential in the Yachtmaster models. Like there's, you know, there's a lot of models that are not quite as uh, common on the wrist that really have, people complain sometimes that Rolex is too conservative, but the Yachtmaster is one of those collections where I feel like there's been a lot of interesting variations, different colors and finishings. And especially with the oyster flex, you know, you can you can play around quite a lot. If they, yeah. you know, if they think it befits the brand, they should definitely do something uh, with that model. Yeah. Um, another prediction for actually for this year was uh, the the steel and gold uh, Daytona uh, that uh, did not come with uh, a ceramic bezel yet. But it's a bit of a lame, uh, you know. It's probably it's very yeah. likely to go to happen. And then there's one that is a bit wishful thinking of on my side. Um, What's that? I love the Explorer One. Uh, Explorer One, you know, it, it's one of those lovely, all uh, always good watches. You know, it's, it, it befits everything. It's uh, super comfortable. It doesn't stand out. Doesn't shout for attention. Um, it fits. Um, but I would love to see a Polar Edition with a wide dial. I wow. would sort of predicted that two, three years ago, and since that year. We keep including it in the predictions until <laughs> we get there. <laughs> Just make it happen. It's manifestation, yes. I think it's called. <laughs> Mr. Well, Frank, Dufour, please do it. <laughs> I, well, you know, I know he's a big time and tired viewer, so this could of be course, the right. moment. You know, if, if you are listening, uh, uh, Mr. Defour, I would, I would just take the mill gas. Forget about the Explorer one. But, you know, either would be good. You know, one of us will be happy. Um, Frank, thank you very much for joining us and talking Rolex. You know, you do have a suspiciously accurate record. So even if one of those uh, happens, certainly I think that the Submariner with the new movement is a matter of time. The line extension of the Daytona is a matter of time. But, um, you know, the Milgas in particular, I think, is a really creative and cool idea, especially with that bezel. Um, we can dream and we will dream. And, and we'll also dream of doing normal things like um, having uh, – Having a uh, a beer in the same uh, the same room um, at the moment. You're drinking in the morning, and I'm drinking while I'm filming. So we're trying our best to make this real. <laughs> Frank, thank you very much. Hublot or Hublot, depending where in the world we are. Well, how exciting can a bracelet get? Really, a bracelet. I discovered in January in Dubai when I held the Big Bang Integral for the first time, which was an integrated bracelet on a Big Bang model, that it can get very exciting indeed, especially in King Gold. However, we are talking in general about the fact that Big Bang models are now available on integrated bracelets. Now, it's not the first time the Big Bang's been offered on a bracelet, it's the first time it's been offered on a good bracelet. The integrated bracelet makes all the difference here and they have spent three to four years in development of just a bracelet. And I can tell you, on the wrist, it is worth the wait, and it really is quite an extraordinary artwork in itself. We have chamfered and polished edges. We have this really interesting play with light as you move, move your wrist. The Big Bang Integral is a spectacular watch to wear. I just wanna say one more thing about this watch. 
It is against the whole concept of Hublot and the art of fusion because the original idea here was that we combined precious metal cases with rubber straps in this new, more playful play of luxury. The fact that the Big Bang has found its ultimate realization in an integrated bracelet in the same precious metal is an irony, but it's one that I simply do not change my mind for. This is a beautiful watch. Some quick details about the Hublot Big Bang Integral. It is a reasonably sized 42 millimeters for those that want that really oversized Hublot look not currently available. And given how heavy the 42 millimeter version was in my hand, I think you're gonna really struggle to, to wear this thing around at a bigger size. Secondly, we have really sports uh, viability at 100 meters water resistance. And we have a definitely significant 13.45 millimeter thickness. But again, I wouldn't even say that that was necessarily riding very high. Um, the whole package comes together in a really wearable and, and very comfortable configuration. Zenith. I'm not gonna lie, ladies and gentlemen, automotive tie-ins with watches have produced some abominations over time. But this is not one of them. If you like Land Rover, if you like watches that creatively interpret other design codes, if you like Zenith, this is the nexus of all three things. This is a large watch. It is a 44 millimeter gray titanium watch with lots of little sexy facts and nuances that reflect Land Rover's design and overall robustness and call to adventure. One little interesting fact is that the case back resembles, doesn't just resemble, it literally mimics the exact shape of a Land Rover wheel. So if you love Land Rovers, you can basically wear one on your wrist now. The Zenith Defy Midnight Collection. I feel like I've said enough about this. When I first saw these watches, I was in love. It's these gradient dials. It's the integration of a starry night sky into the darker realms of the dial. It is the colors of the dials and it is the way that these fit so beautifully into the Defy case. I love this collection. I've said a lot about it. I won't talk anymore. I'll probably throw to something, but here are the watches. They are absolutely beautiful. It's a women's collection. I am subtly but persistently pressuring Zenith to look at migrating this to a men's collection. Wouldn't that be cool? Right, the Zenith Chronomaster Revival Shadow. So you think murdering watches out is kind of a modern idea? No, it's not. It started before I was born. In the 30s, no, in the 70s, uh, there was a blacked out Zenith El Primero model, which has been renamed the Shadow. The movement powering this watch is the mighty El Primero Caliber 4061 Automatic which beats at 36,000 vibrations per hour, which gives it a ever so slightly more smooth sweep of the seconds hand. This is another winning limited edition from Zenith to follow on from the sold out cover girl done in cahoots with Revolution. And the price is 8,200 US dollars. 